sometimes when it was hiding in our homeland. We would feel its aftermaths in succession, running our fingers along the seams of cracked earth. Means for making meaning ever mutating made new forms where the formers were buried. We moved soil to make room for our dead. Seedlings, too, even then. We could not call it war until we survived it. In the meantime, it was living. It was diapers and babies, earaches and crackers, and someone still had to milk the cows, walk the dogs, and soak the beans overnight. What did you do? They will ask us later. We may forget by then how we folded laundry and clipped toenails. How sometimes, yes, even then, someone would show up with a cake and someone else would find plates. We would pass slices one at a time among the living. Eventually, talk turned to having and spending, to getting and maintaining as it often did, and you could feel the way we became coiled springs ready to fire, and everyone was excited, and no one could sleep. It was so much. Another time, there was nothing and no talk anymore of what could be got. Even our resistance to loss had gone out of us and it made us porous. There was no more talk of keeping except when it came to someone at the hearth and the babies fed. A vessel, once emptied, can only carry what comes into it. A hand outstretched toward another holds the world in its emptiness. The fist is what you get when the cold is too much for too long and the hand forgets itself. In warmth, it remembers its radius star-like. Then, cupped with another, it cradles what is delicate, and it brings it to the lips, an offering in earnest, or to another, saying, Here. <laughs>